This right here is the braided wig wig cap prep you have been searching for. Welcome back to my channel. I am Dibasi Messi in case you don't already know and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to prep your braided wig wig cap. I'm also going to list out the things you're going to be needing for this process. If that sounds like something you're interested in then make sure to keep on watching. Love you. Mwah. So lovelies, first things first, I'm going to listen out the essentials you're going to be needing. Alright, so the first thing you're going to be needing is your dawn cap. I normally like using a spandex dawn cap or a mesh dawn cap, but I recommend you use a dawn cap because of the weight of your weave, of the braids, right? It could interfere if you're using like a net space on the weights of the braids you're making if that makes any sense so i always advise you use a dawn cap be it mesh or be it spandex so number two on our essential list is your measuring tape measuring tape is very essential because for wig cap prep there's a lot of measurements involved all right you have your circumference of your head measurement the measurement of your list also matters all right so with your measuring tape you're able to measure out if you're doing a five by five measurement a six by six also on and so forth so number three on our essential list is your canvas head for me i actually advise you invest in a very good canvas head instead of using a mannequin head it's not bad to use a mannequin head but i just advise you kind of invest in a good canvas head and if you're a professional you want to make sure you have like different sizes of the canvas head if it's for just your personal use you just need your head size i'm going to show you how to take that measurement later on but if you're a professional if you do for customers you make sure you have like almost all the sizes of the canvas head if possible so number four and the final essential on our list is our lace net there are different type of lace nets in the market you have your hd lace you have your swiss lace and so on and so forth and you also have them come in different sizes which is by two by six you have four by four you have five by five you have six by six and so on and so forth and also you have your 13 by four which is normally your frontal wig or 13 by six depending on the sizes all right and also it comes in lace yards if you were not new to my channel you've seen me use that severally it comes in lace yard with this you can actually get to customize the one you want whenever you want it if you have a lace yard you can just cut out what you need at that particular moment so now we are done listing out the essentials we're going to get into the making of your wig cap so for making your wig cap, you need three important measurements, all right? I would say two, but three, let's just leave it at three important measurements. And this is for either for you or for your clients. You just need these three important measurements for you to get their custom well-fitted wig cap, all right? Because you want to make sure what if you're making for someone, if it's not um something you buy from the store if it's going to be custom made you want to make sure you are getting their perfect head measurement you want to make sure it's a perfect fit for them so the three important measurements you need is the circumference of your head or the circumference of your client's head and also you need the start of your hairline to the end of your hairline i'm going to show you how to make these measurements also and for the third one you need your ear to ear measurement why i said it's normally two because if it's not a frontal wig you don't need the ear to ear measurement most of the time but when it's a frontal wig that's when you necessarily need the ear to ear measurements so getting into circumference so the circumference of your head or the circumference of the measurement you're using determines the mannequin head or the canvas head you're going to be using like i said earlier canvas head comes in various sizes i think it ranges from 21 to 26 all right so i'm going to show you how to take that measurement so if your client's head is you know a 23 you want to make sure you're using a 23 inch canvas head so you don't give them something smaller or something too big for their head because you want it to fit since it's a custom made wig you want it to fit and that's the goal we are trying to get to right here 
So for taking your measurement correctly, you're going to need your measuring tape in inches, all right? I'm just going to take that measuring tape and go round my hairline, all right? So just round my hairline. This is the correct way to take your measurement. I'm going to show you what you do not want to do. You do not want to take your measuring tape across your forehead, all right? You want it to be on your hairline. If you go across your forehead, the measurement is not going to be accurate. So you want to make sure it's across your hairline so for the second measurement is the front of your hairline to the end of your hairline just that alone is explanatory all you have to do is take the measuring tape from the start of your hairline to the end of your hairline and just measure out so the next thing i'm going to do is take the ear to ear measurement for the ear to ear measurement is exactly the same thing you just want to take it from your hairline all right from your front hairline the ear to ear and that's really it okay now let's get into customizing our wig cap to be our size because some wig caps don't come our size so i'm just going to take my canvas head and put that on my tripod and you can see from the canvas head itself the back and the front all right so i'm just going to go ahead and place my wig cap on the canvas head so what i do is i take my measuring tape and just measure eight to nine inches from the bottom of the canvas head because that's where I like my wig cap starting all right that's where your wig cap should start from either eight inches or nine inches okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and fit that properly and I'm also going to show you how to measure your wig your canvas head in case the number doesn't come on the canvas head just so you're not cheated so I'm just gonna take that tape and just kind of go through and just kind of measure the hairline on the canvas head and you can see from this mine is reading 22 my circumference of my head is 22 so it makes sense i'm using a 22 canvas head all right i hope that is explanatory so that's how we transfer the circumference of the head by using the canvas head of that size so i'm just going to go ahead and transfer the front of the hairline to the end of the hairline measurement all right so mine is a 13 and a half so i'm just going to go ahead and pin that down by 13 by half so i'm just going to go ahead and place that hip in inside the wig cap and kind of drag it down to that point where i measured my 13.5 because i already see the hole where i poked it earlier so i'm just going to use that hip in to drag it down to that exact point thereby making the wig cap exactly to my front of the hairline and end of the hairline measurements so the next thing I do is kind of use the two lines on the canvas head as a guideline and just kind of take my T-pins and just kind of drag down the rest of the wig cap to that point so it's kind of equal and that kind of gives the illusion of the nape of the neck. So now you're just seeing the extra fabric I have left for the wig cap because this wig cap right now is my size but you're seeing the extra fabric I have on so I'm just going to go ahead and tuck that fabric in. You can tuck this fabric any way you want but I found out that this is like a meet up way of doing it you can do it however you like tuck it however you like but i just find out this is more neater so you want to make sure you're not kind of pulling everything down you're not making it so tight you want to give space for whatever you're going to do with the wig cap if you're going to be crocheting you need a lot of more space like you want to give space for it don't let it be too tight that it becomes really tight and really choking so you can see from what i did that there's still extra fabric so i'm just going to go ahead and sew this down all right i'm going to just going to take my thread and needle and sew this down you want to pass the thread through the fabric of the wig cap only you do not want to pass it through the elastic band obviously so i'm just going to go ahead and sew this and let you guys watch the process Okay, when you're done you want to make sure you tie it really tightly especially if you only looped when you were sewing and didn't do the tie method at all you want to make sure you tie it really tightly and secure it really properly so it doesn't end up losing so this is what is looking like after we're done you can see how neatly tucked in it looks like and this is our end result so now i'm just going to go into customizing our closure casement so there are two ways to do this either you cut it out or you mark on the cap i'm going to be doing the mark on cap method today and we're going to be doing a 3 by 4 closure and I'm going to show you I ended up from this to the final results. 
So first things first, I'm just going to map out my horizontal measurements, which is the first digit, which is the three. I'm going to divide that by two. I'm using my tape to do that division. You see that middle line on my canvas head? That's where I'm going to place the digit that was divided by two, which is 1.5 because I'm using three inch. This kind of makes sure that you're placing it equally. All right. So it's equal inches on both sides of your face so left and right has equal inches so i have a 1.5 on one end and 1.5 on the other end if that makes any sense so i'm just going to go ahead and map out that three inches then after i'm done with that i'm just going to go ahead and map out my vertical which is a four because we are doing a three by four measurement to map out that vertical line i'm just going to place my pin on the measuring tape all right and then i'm just going to map out my four so after marking it out, the next thing I do is just draw it together, kind of match the lines together, creating that kind of U shape, basically. And that's really it for mapping it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and place my lace net on the wig cap. Before you place it, just take a look at this. You want to make sure your lace net is going straight down like this. If it's not straight down like this, you cannot ventilate it, all right? So you want to make sure it's straight down like this. You do not want it turned like this, all right? This is a no, okay? You want to make sure it's coming down and not going this way. So I'm just going to go ahead and place that lace net on the wig cap. You want to make sure you place it with an inch or one and a half inch leave out. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and use these smaller pins and just pin that down. You don't want to use T pins when you're working with lace net because it could rip it. So you want to make sure to get these very little pins because they can actually pass through the net without ripping it or anything. So first of all, I just go ahead to pin the corners of the lace net. All right, I pin the corners, then go in with little, little pins to kind of get rid of any creasing because you want that wig net to be as flat as possible rather you want the list net to be as flat as possible so i'm just going to go ahead with those pins and just pin it little by little to get rid of any creasing so once you're done it should look like this all right so i'm just going to go ahead to cut off that excess lace that i have left on it and then when i'm done cutting off the excess lace i'm just going to go in and sew that closure down for me, how I really sew this doesn't really matter because the track is not going to show when I'm done making my wig. If you've seen me make my wig, you know that I actually always crochet this part so it doesn't show. So necessarily the track doesn't really matter. It's just kind of an extra security for me, but it really doesn't matter how my track looks. So I'm just going to go ahead to cut off that excess wig cap and this is what we're ending up with. This is what your wig cap will look like when you're done with your closure. So now we're done with the closure, we're going to be moving on to the frontal. So for the frontal, I'm going to be using my mesh cap. I actually prefer using the mesh cap a lot, but if I don't see a mesh cap, I then settle for a spandex cap. So I'm just going to go in and tuck in my SS in the front. So remember I told you it doesn't really matter where you tuck in and this being a frontal if you tuck it in the front you kind of cut off the excess afterwards like you're going to cut it off at the end all right so that's what I went in to do with this so I'm just going to show you if you're using the already cut out method you just kind of sew this on it like it's very easy but today we're going to be doing the map on method all right so we're going to be using the yard lace instead so today I'm going to be doing a 13 by 5 frontal, alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and pin the half of it which is 6.5 right on the middle of the canvas head. Then I'm just going to go ahead and map out the 1 and 13 on each side, alright. So the closure on the frontal is a very kind of similar process to it, it's just the length that's kind of different, so it's a very similar process. So after I'm done marking out the horizontal part, I'm going to go in to mark out the vertical part. So all I'm going to do is just pin it down like usual and then just go ahead to map out where I want my inch to be. So today I went in with a 5 inch. I did a 4 before but then the tutorial I'm going to do with this wig cap requires like a 5 inch vertical. So I just went in to do the 5 inch and then I'm just going to join it together like we did before. Thank you. 
so now i'm just going to go ahead and place the lace net you want to make sure you place the lace net vertically do not forget if you don't place it vertically you cannot ventilate all right it's very important that you place it vertically because if it's not vertically you can't make a part for your wig it just doesn't it won't work all right so i'm just going to go ahead and pin in the side side and corners of the place where i've mapped out all right then afterwards i'm just going to go in with my small pins and kind of remove any creasing from the frontal so basically that's what i'm going to do so you could just see what i'm doing on the screen So after I'm done pinning everything down with little to no creasing, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the excess leads off. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and sew that down to the wig cap like normal. So lovers, I really hope this video was explanatory and you learned a lot. Let me know if you have any question about anything I did down below. And let me know what other video you would like to see on this channel. If you've still not given this video a thumbs up, I really don't know what you're doing because I mean I really went all in on this video to provide as much information as I can. Alright, so moving on, I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the excess wig cap like usual, alright? So basically it's just a repetition of what we did before but in a frontal way. So this is what the end result is looking like and this is how it came out. So lovelies, that's it really for this video. I really hoped it was explanatory and I really hope she learned 18 or 2. Alright, I really hope like from now on your braided wig cap prep is a lot more easier. If you have any question, let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. If you're watching the end of this video, you already know you're the what? You already know you're the real MVP. Make sure to check out this hair tutorial. I already have a tutorial up on it. If you've not seen that yet, make sure to see that right here. I'm going to leave it here for you to check out. Make sure to check it out. Love you so much and I'll see you in my next week's tutorial. Bye lovelies.